Recently, I played through Halo 4 with the help of some friends to keep ourselves sane. It didn't work. The following is a completely accurate summary of the campaign. Trust me. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. The game begins with Dr. Halsey being interrogated about kidnapping six-year-olds to pump them full of drugs and stuff them into supersuits. But this entire three-minute cutscene is a huge waste of time because literally none of this is important to the story of Halo 4 and never comes up again. Also, based on the excuse given for the art style changes, machine, son. this scene of Spartans dropping in to fight the Covenant doesn't make any sense, because they're not in the right armor and the Covenant aren't either. There's a really cool looking brute chieftain here, but there are no brutes in Halo 4 at all. Now the game really begins, four years after the end of Halo 3, with John being defrosted by Milf Tana, who must have been so bored during the last four years that she made herself look even more naked than before. Because of Chief's extended time in cryosleep, the brain damage of being woken up again sees the return of Dustin Echoes, and two new hallucinations whose names are I don't care and neither should you. Because I'm not player one, I get to watch the true John step out of the freezer while the rest of us are still on ice because we're really not important. We take a leisurely stroll through the forward unto dawn before getting virus scanned, so we decide to climb through an elevator shaft to see what's up. Luckily I got to the David Cage section first, so I'm in control of the quick time event, and everyone else has to sit patiently and watch me, because whoever designed this game didn't give a shit about the other players. After climbing through the dubstep shaft, Chief, watch out! Uh... we're given our first in-game look at the new Covenant designs, but John isn't impressed, so he tosses him away with the power of David Cage quick time events. We crack open a window to get some fresh air, but the Covenant decide that we're not allowed to have nice things and send in assault forces, and we're never given an explanation in Halo 4 for why the Covenant is still a thing after we beat them in Halo 3 and why it's headed by elites. To escape the Covenant, we get on an elevator and team kill each other to the next floor. We make our way outside and find a group of aliens just taking a walk, so we murder them because they can't give us the same courtesy when we just woke up from a four-year nap and need to stretch our legs. After the the aliens make it clear they're still not going to let us take our walk, we launch a nuke at them because that's clearly a sane escalation for the situation. We make an observation about the size of Covenant ships. But aren't the cruisers supposed to be much bigger? These are baby cruisers. Uh, Nano machines. That's the explanation for everything. Nano machines. Yeah. Yeah. The giant planet that no one mentioned until now, despite being in the skybox, gets angry at us for not being diplomatic with the Covenant to solve our problems. So it begins to eat everyone and we run desperately back inside to get to an escape pod so that we can crash safely. We don't make it to the escape pod so we decide to raw dog the atmosphere and just fall on our own. And that's the end of the game. But then there's more. Miltana starts channeling Shodan, and we find out that AI only lasts seven years before they start going crazy, and that's why she's acting strangely. Not because of any of the events in Halo 2 and 3 where we left her alone with a giant talking soggy churro that tortured her for weeks. Now that everyone's dead, we finally get to take our walk through the wasteland of ships, before coming across a car that Temi and I grab before anyone else can get to us, and we leave them behind to be teleported arbitrarily after us. We meet back up with the aliens and try to force our way through them, and we all make it through with absolutely no problems whatsoever. After restarting the level to get Sonoma back in, we brute force our way back through that section and die our way through the next one. We make it to a loading room and team kill each other until a door opens up for us. Miltana lets us know that we're stuck inside a planet called Requiem, which means we now have the chance to blow up the distribution plant that makes rec packs for Halo 5 so that they don't show up again in Halo Infinite. You're welcome. The Covenant show up to try to stop us from preventing loot box monetization of Halo Infinite, but we murder them and find out that all of our buddies in the UNSC are already halfway there, so we murder our way across a bridge to catch up to them. We die our way through another open area and take an elevator to a cutscene where we find out that we can shut down the production for wreck packs by making it further inside the planet, but we're interrupted by the brand new terrible enemy type for Halo 4. After taking a portal to the planet's core, we find out that in order to shut down production, we have to release it from its bondage. We murder some evil dogs because John doesn't believe in rehabilitation for animals and speed run to the next section, where we have to die our way through an onslaught of evil dogs and robot dinosaurs to destroy an arbitrary amount of red balls so that we can unlock an elevator. Temi shuts down the first bondage battery and we take a portal to the next area to do the same thing again. We skip our way past a bunch of enemies to steal a ghost so that we can go to the next red ball destroying area and die our way to the next elevator. We team kill our way up the elevator to the next battery and I prepare to shut it off when... Get that beam down now! They Wait, what? Opening. What happened? What just happened? <laughs> Wait, whoa, 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 what just- <laughs> Wait, what, what did you do? Uh, we all died. We all died? We lose 10 minutes and have to die our way through the whole section again. After making it back to the elevator, we all sit awkwardly while it goes up so that we don't accidentally reset the checkpoint again, and Temi shuts off the next battery. I could complete ODST in the time it takes this animation to finish. 
We take a portal to the next area and skip our way past more enemies to a small elevator, to the same exact area copy-pasted to skip more enemies again. We finally make it to the podium to stop the production of rec packs, but it's not actually the control for production, and we accidentally hatch a space racist from an egg. The space racist starts monologuing about stuff we don't care about, and decides not to just outright kill us, so that we have a chance to escape and foil his plans. We all grab ghosts and I get to experience the level because I'm in front, but everyone else gets repeatedly crushed by the environment because whoever designed this game didn't give a shit about the other players. After almost falling off a cliff that I doubt would have done any actual damage if we had, we get a good look at the UNSC Buzz Lightyear, that immediately crashes because of things that happen off screen and are never explained to us in game. We drudge our way through a forest to meet up with Lasky, the only good character in this game by default because he's the only person that isn't whiny or a dick. We also meet Sarah Palmer, who is whiny and a dick. We finish making our way through the forest so that we can get an Uber ride to the giant crashed ship, except it just drops us off an arbitrary distance away so we have to murder our way back on our own. Two stars. After tying our way to an elevator, we're lifted inside the Buzz Lightyear and murder our way through the aliens who came to welcome us to the neighborhood, because we're homicidal xenophobes. We grab some cars and die our way through a hallway full of aliens before making it to an elevator that brings us up to peanut butter and jelly machines that we destroy because no one is allowed to have nice things. The space racist fucks off since we ruined his lunch and the UNSC Buzz Lightyear can finally take off again. Miltana has a conversation with Lasky and Captain Del Rio, where it's revealed that the Buzz Lightyear's mission is to explore strange new worlds, seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Hang on, this isn't the right script. The Buzz Lightyear has been seeking out Halo rings and establishing research bases around them. But one of the science teams got fucked with and died, but the research data that they recovered led the crew to Requiem. Then Del Rio says he plans on leaving because he needs to let the rest of the fleet know the dangers of Requiem. But Chief is bloodthirsty and wants to kill the space racist and... That's the end of the scene, okay? Cut to some time later when we're flying through a canyon getting briefed about the mission to destroy the natives' wells so they won't have access to drinking water. We find out that there won't be any forward recon to let us know what we're going up against, but that's fine because that sounds like literally every single mission in the previous Halo games anyways, outside of that one single time in Halo 2 where you see a scouting party. We get a glimpse of, hey, wait a second, I was gonna make a dick joke, but that's already in the game? No fair. We run off ahead of the mammoth because we can't be bothered to waste precious time when we could be finishing Halo 4 faster so that we don't have to play Halo 4 anymore, and it speeds up to catch up to us, only to slow back down just to prove that it could be going faster, but fuck us, I guess. After killing the mammoth's entire crew out of spite, we blow past some enemies and then skip an entire boundary because this game is really easy to break. A lich flies in and we find out that somewhere along the way we broke the trigger that's supposed to allow us inside, so we spend the next five minutes trying to jump on top of the ship, only to somehow get the trigger working and we go inside the normal way and blow it up. We team kill our way to the next section full of sniper jackals, but luckily we're not playing Halo 2, so we're free to die our way through the section with impunity. After wandering into a forerunner structure, we team kill each other down an elevator, because I guess we'd already forgotten about the incident from earlier. Miltana gets sucked off, but we're too busy team killing each other to care. We have a hallucination of Rule 63 Voldemort, who spends the next four minutes spouting a metric fuckload of exposition at us, but let's be honest, no one actually pays attention in this cutscene. Femme Voldemort makes us cream our pants and gives us her STD, so now we're immune to being turned into dust by the space racist. Then we all died, so we get to watch Chief cream himself again. We pick Miltana back up and take an elevator back downstairs to a portal, which sends us back outside to where the Buzz Lightyear shows up, but it's much smaller than it's supposed to look. Uh, does anybody else think the Infinity looks really, really small right now? Hey, it's not only does it look small as I'm jumping and bobbing up and down, the view model is moving with me. <laughs> it's not small, it's just really cold, okay guys? <laughs> <laughs> we throw ourselves at the enemies until they're all dead and call of duty a well and then do the cool guys don't look at explosions thing but there's no explosion a cutscene plays with broken lighting and graphical glitches and we're more distracted by the weird shit than the actual content of the cutscene but the gist is that del rio is rightly unhappy about the fact that chief and cortana want to risk the lives of everyone aboard the infinity just to stop the didact instead of trying to leave the planet to call for backup and somehow del rio is supposed to be the bad guy in this scenario cortana literally has a psychotic outburst and del rio wants her deleted but chief doesn't let him and everyone just disobeys his orders which are all perfectly reasonable given the situation, but somehow Del Rio is supposed to be the bad guy in this scenario? Who wrote this? Milftana has an existential crisis while Chief arms up and Lasky helps us escape by giving us a fully armed pelican that we immediately crash and die, so we have to restart the entire section. So we crash the pelican again and get stuck inside of it. I'm stuck! I'm stuck in the fucking pelican. <laughs> What? So we restart the section again. I make it inside and we take a gondola that we have to arbitrarily get off of to press a button and then get back on so we can make it to the end of the room, where we give the installation an allergic reaction and then hop onto the gondola to go all the way back to the beginning of the room again. So we team kill each other to pass the time. When we make it outside, there's a magically pristine pelican waiting for us that we fly to the next section just to die so we can do it again. After dying several more times and getting stuck inside the pelican again, I have to leave. And that means we have to do it all again. All again. This time, we spend the extra effort to actually kill the enemies in the area before landing carefully and taking a grav lift where Temi ascends.
and we're dumped out onto some platforms where we murder some aliens to the end of the level. We drop Milf Tana off and she has another breakdown, but we're too busy team killing each other while we wait for the cutscene. Chief jumps off a cliff and sews away on the outside of a lich, so we can follow the space races through the slip space rupture and we're dumped out next to a halo ring. Now we'll finally be able to get down on the halo ring where we'll stop the didacta and... Haha, <laughs> there's no levels on the Halo Ring. Seriously? The only reason this game doesn't end on a Halo Ring is because the scientists have taken the composer to the research station on some asteroids, which is such a cop-out. Miltana freaks out again and we crash into the station, which is honestly par for the course with how Chief lands most of the other vehicles in the other games. We shoot through the residents of the station and meet up with Dr. Tilson, who is really uncooperative about blowing up the giant death laser to prevent the space races from using it because of the sunken cost fallacy. She finally agrees to help us blow it up and we make our way to the nuke controls because this research station just has nuclear weapons, I guess. We insert Milftana into the defense grid and appreciate her personality for a second, before making our way to Neil Davidge and blowing up all the inbound flights because we're closed. We take an elevator, but it gets broken halfway, and the space racist steals Neil Davidge for himself, so we go to rescue Dr. Tilson, except the space racist activates his new toy, and everyone gets Raiders of the Lost Ark except for us, because we're immune to the effect because of our Voldemort STD. After waking up from our nap, Milftana has another existential crisis, because I guess there just wasn't enough of those in this action game about blowing up brightly colored aliens already. We commandeer a broadsword and take the nuke, because it's not like the science team is going to be using it, and catch up to the space racist ship that we bum a ride on because we can't fly the broadsword through the slip space rupture. We fly through the trenches of the space racist ship, but someone's connection causes us to lag constantly and we just kind of stop and float in place for a bit a few times. After blowing up the ship's defenses, the Buzz Lightyear zaps them gently and we're sandwiched into the ship, so we hop out and grab a spaghetti thermos to bring on our hike. We portal hop our way to the space racist boss chamber, which isn't actually a boss fight, just a slog through some bullet sponges until we get to the end. We drop Miltana off and she reproduces asexually, but the space racist activates the death laser to destroy Arizona. After running our way through another slog of bullet sponges, we catch up to the space racist who telekinetically bitch slaps us and makes us drop our spaghetti. So we run for it, but he grabs us and monologues some more instead of just dropping us. And then a horde of milf tanas shows up and tinkerbells the space racist, so we're thrown into the David Cage quick time event that only Temmie gets to play. So we mess around with some fail states to see what happens if we don't press the buttons. Chief activates the spaghetti and we blow up the... Er, well, actually the screen turns white and we end up in some digital world and then just take milf tana's word that we blew up the ship. They have a heart to heart and milf Tana says goodbye, because I guess the space was a protection bubble that she made for us so we didn't nuke ourselves? They don't really say. A pelican picks up Chief and returns him to the Buzz Lightyear, where he has a heart-to-heart -heart with Lasky and then Chief talks to himself. Cut to an after credit scene where a bunch of medics arrive to help the citizens of New Phoenix, except everyone is just dust. And Chief takes off his armor and we finally get a look at his face. Or, just his eyes. Okay. It's not like they didn't already show us his face as a kid, why not just show us the whole thing now? Game over. That's fantastic. Stand near the crates, but don't ever move them. Right. Right. But if anybody even looks at the crates, that's a violation. Oh, yeah. <laughs>